Hello everyone, welcome to Professional Cipher. Today we are going to deep dive into convolutional neural networks. We all must have used CNN at some time to classify images or work around anything regarding images. We know CNN works, but only some of us know how it works or what happens inside. Is it really important to know what happens inside CNN or any such thing like LSTM, RNN? Actually yes, you should know what happens inside because then only you will be able to modify or hyper tune convolutional neural network parameters according to your use so that you can bring up a good model. I am sure you used CNN from TensorFlow, Keras or even PyTorch. But let's know what's CNN. You would have seen convolutional neural network representation. But before diving in, we should understand why we need CNN. Have you ever thought why we need CNN? Because when we start our machine learning journey, we see neural networks. The first image I have shown here is the typical one which you would come across and you will learn about. But why we need a new thing when already something is working? Okay, let's memorize why we used neural networks, the fully connected layers at the first place. We had a set of features, right? Let it be n, right? Let it be n. Then we use those n features as inputs and got an output which is either one value or multiple values according to the classification problems, right? This is a general example of a regression or logistical regression problem. But why doesn't this help us with an image? We used an input with n features, right? But what is an image? We should go deep into the mathematics because an image is pixels, a collection of pixels, right? So we would have heard like 1080p or anything. So let's take an example of an image of 128 by 128 pixels. Given this calculation, we know that there will be 128 by 128 values and from the early case, we know that we will have to multiply each value with the weights. So 128 by 128 itself is a big number. When we multiply it with other weights, the number keeps on increasing, right? So by the end, if we use an image as an input to an ordinary neural network like the first one, we would be getting a huge amount of parameters to learn on. When the trainable parameters increase, we will need large computational powers. But can we afford that much? As I said, 128 by 128 itself is a huge number. When we keep on working on that, the number increases. So we need a solution. Also, we can't afford that much of a time that we keep on doing the mathematics on 128 by 128 and each layer it increases. At this point, CNN comes to rescue. As you can see in the images, there is something different between those two images. As this is the first episode on CNN, we will be understanding what's happening to an image when it goes through this. As you can see, we move from low level features to high level features. Okay, low level features are features which are in very much detail, which are small, very, very small. And when we go to high level, we will get a bigger picture of what it is. So, in the lower level features, we can see edges and all. And in mid level features, we can see small, small shapes forming. And on high level features, we get a glimpse of the big picture of what it is. And once we keep on moving, we will get understandings about the whole image. So what's happening here? Let's understand what's happening at a single layer of CNN. Let's assume these are the values of the pixels in the image and we pass it to the first filter or kernel. Okay, so when we define convolutional neural networks, we will be passing the images through filters or kernels. Okay, so let's understand what's the mathematical operation happening here. A multiplication sign is given. So is it matrix multiplication or what's happening? We have to first understand that we pass the input on the left side and it undergoes a mathematical operation with the filter or kernel, then we get an output. Usually what happens is then we use that output to input to the next convolutional neural network and it goes on till a point we need. Then we flatten 
the matrix into a single strip similar to linear regression. So let's understand the mathematical operation. Here we can see that the filter or kernel size, we call it filter size, which is 3 by 3, right? So for doing a mathematical operation, we need a similar sized matrix. So let's start with the 3 by 3 matrix from our output. Can you guess what's happening here by pausing the video? What's really happening here is we multiply the corresponding cells and add all the products. So here you can see that 3 into 1 plus 0 into 0 plus minus 1 into 1 plus 1 into 1 plus 5 into 0 plus minus 1 into 8 plus 2 into 1 plus 0 into 7 plus minus 1 into 2 would be giving us minus 5. Then we do something like we move on to the next 3 by 3 section from the input and do the same operation and then we get minus 4. Similarly, we continue, we will get another matrix. But this time, for a change, the number of channels would increase, which we will discuss later. So this is the simple operation happening in a CMI. So if you remember from the previous slide, I had mentioned the low level features, right? So yes, from this image that we have given, these values 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, they would be serving a purpose, either edge detection or any such thing. So in the previous image, you can see there are edges detected, right? So when an image is passed through such specific matrices, we would be getting such specific properties. So the outputted image, which is minus 5, minus 4, 0, will be giving us an edge or something like that. That's the low level feature. And when we progress, we will be getting a high level knowledge. Recapping today's convolutional neural network, why we need CNN because of the huge parameters we will be dealing with. Then we understand how an image goes through CNN. Then we understood how each layer works, what's happening, what's the mathematical operation we are doing here. This was an introduction to convolutional neural networks. I hope you found the video useful. Subscribe to Professional Cypher for more. Thank you.